Good morning, Chairman. Ranking Member Shabbat and distinguished members of the committee. As Mr. Shabbat said, my name is Donald Boding, and I'm the general manager for the Merchant Services Division of Fifth Third. I appreciate the opportunity to appear today and offer you some industry perspective on the proposal to require institutions that make payments to merchants for payment card transactions to file those annual information reports with the IRS. First, I'd like to give you some, some general thoughts about on the increased information reporting and then dive a little deeper on some of the aspects that maybe the other panel members haven't touched on. To begin, in short, I think we can draw a few initial conclusions about this potentially sweeping proposal. Notwithstanding the limited availability of detail as, it, as to its specific requirements and implementation parameters. First, the enactment of such increased information reporting measure would come at a very difficult time in the economy, particularly for financial institutions and small business sectors. New and increased risk and reporting requirements will translate into significant IT investment expense and allocation of employee talent by processors like myself to ensure compliance during both a ramp-up period and on a go-forward basis. Second, the potential application of backup withholding presents tremendous risks for both processors and merchants. At 28 percent, backup withholding will have deep impacts on merchants and in some cases represent the difference between success and failure. Third, the merchant processing industry as developed does not operate in a way to comply with the known parameters of this proposal. Fourth, the proposal will strain the relationship between payment processors and merchant customers, in some cases driving merchants to avoid the convenience and security of electronic payment systems. Finally, given the vague nature of the proposals offered to date, the full impact on all parties will not be known until implementation and compliance have been audited. It is likely that interested parties are not fully aware of the operational impacts that this will have. First, focusing on the cost of compliance. System modification and contract renegotiations and the time associated with both will place significant expense on payment processors. Further processors will need to store and secure the data provided to the IRS. The expected hard costs associated with ramping up and maintaining a program to facilitate compliant reporting are only part of the cost that should be expected to arise out of this proposal. It should be expected that the number of hours a processor will ultimately have to devote to troubleshooting alleged errors in the reporting would be significant. For instance, if the IRS reporting from a processor does not reconcile with other reporting received by a particular merchant, it will likely result in significant hours spent my, by myself and my team trying to help that merchant reconcile through that process. This will add a level of complexity to all new product initiatives. Additional analysis and possible extra development will be required each time new payment product is developed and or rolled out. Specific to backup withholding, as noted, the merchant reporting proposal includes the requirement to hold, withhold 28 percent of payments made to merchants on whom we do not have a valid TIN. Processors will be required to immediately withhold on any payment on which the TIN is missing or is obviously an incorrect example, or an incorrect number rather. The impact of this new withholding on merchants, particularly smaller merchants, would be substantial, presenting great complication and burden on their cash management procedures as been already noted by the panel. The reduction of cash flow based upon transactions that may have no income tax consequence would be a tremendous burden to our merchant clients. At a minimum, should backup withholding remain a part of any increased merchant reporting proposal, a period of significant phase in, perhaps two to three years, should be provided before withholding is required. This will allow payers time to obtain the necessary customer information and additionally, any new compliance regime in this area should include appropriate safe harbors from penalties where 100 percent compliance is not achieved. Focusing on the impact of the, of the merchant reporting entity relationship, it's certainly possible that the reporting could create tensions between acquirers and processors and their merchant customers who don't understand how the information is going to be used and or disagree with the methodology, methodology by which the processors have created the reporting. This will result in a tremendous amount of concern 
and confusion among our merchant customers. Additionally, fear of audit can make merchants less likely to accept electronic payments. On a final note, it should be expected that non-compliant non taxpayers I'm sorry, on a final note, it should be expected that the non-compliant taxpayers this proposal targets will ultimately find and develop schemes to avoid recognition through this type of reporting. Some may simply stop accepting cards altogether, thereby making it less likely that the IRS will be able to track taxable income. Others may simply work to find loopholes in the reporting mechanisms that are ultimately established. The benefits expected to arise from this initiative may ultimately result in increased cost to the compliant payment card participants, consumers, acquirers, processors, issuers, and merchants, with no real benefit to these same participants. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have. 